everyone! Some of you who've been watching this channel for a while may remember that not long ago I made a video all about Doctor Who with my friend Dennis. Well, my friend Rachel, who lives in Canada, who I have been friends with since I was only 16 years old, yes, this year, that's 20 years. <laughs> Anyway, she saw that video and ever since it went live she's been saying to me, Emma, we should make a Doctor Who video too. So, we have. One of the things I really love is when you have a friend who is into the same fandom as you. You don't have to both be obsessive about something, but when you share an interest with somebody, it just makes it more fun. You get to chat about it and it's something that you can share together and that's always good. And for me and my friend Rachel, that's what Doctor Who is. So, I guess I should let Rachel introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Rachel and I'm a good friend of Emma aka Mrs Mannix. Now whilst I may think I'm incredibly old, Rachel and I are of an age where we didn't grow up as small children watching Doctor Who. Doctor Who got cancelled by the BBC in 1989. I was five. See, for my childhood, growing up with Doctor Who was pretty much the odd repeat of episodes throughout the 90s on BBC Cheap. And all I knew about Doctor Who was that it scared my uncle so much he used to hide behind the sofa. Tell me when they've gone! Tell me when they've gone! So, there are a lot of classic Who episodes that I haven't seen. If I had to pick a favourite Doctor from the classic era, I would probably say Patrick Troughton, but there's a lot of episodes I need to catch up on before I can really say that with any confidence. If you'd asked Rachel about them, who's your favourite Doctor? I was probably going to say Sylvester McCoy, because that was the Doctor I remembered watching. But after the 30th anniversary and being introduced to the previous incarnation of Doctor Who, John Pertley was my favourite Doctor. Still, there were Doctor Who episodes that were around while we were children. Plus, there was a TV movie that came out when I was in my teens. 1996, the television movie with Paul McGann came. And yes, I watched that movie. I wouldn't say I was a fanatical Doctor Who fan, but I was a big enough fan that I wanted to watch it. I wanted to recognise that this was the Doctor. Ah yes, Paul McGann, my close personal friend. I'll tell you a little story about the day I met Paul McGann. I handed him a sonic screwdriver and said, could you please hold this in the photo we're going to have together? And his exact words were, I shall not just hold it, I shall wield it. And he wielded it at the camera the wrong way round. The thought was there. Thank you, Paul. In 2003, the BBC announced that Doctor Who was going to come back, which was awesome. I was excited. So, 2005, Doctor Who came back to the screen. So it wasn't until Doctor Who came along as a whole reboot that I became a fan. And I happened to know that it was in 2005 that Rachel also got really into the show. I was blown away. We had drama, we had action, we had comedy. This show had everything. And in 45 minutes. From my perspective, it was a case of sitting in front of the TV, watching the first episode, and in the space of those 45 minutes, I went from... to... I feel like we need to take a moment to really talk about the absolute brilliance of Christopher Eccleston. Fantastic! I absolutely fell in love with the show, partly because of his portrayal and that was what hooked me in and kept me watching. So, I have got big love for Christopher Eccleston's Doctor. I always will have. Christopher Eccleston was a great choice. We got to see his fun side, his tormented side, and every side in between. Christopher Eccleston is a great Doctor for a whole new generation of fans. And then he kind of broke my heart by telling everybody that he was only doing one season and then leaving. 
less fantastic. June 2005 comes around and we see the Doctor regenerate into David Tennant. Spoiler alert! Rachel haunts David Tennant quite a bit. Don't hate me for saying this, we both know it's true. I will do my best not to fangirl about David Tennant. David Tennant is my favourite Doctor. Now, of course, based on his appearance in the Parsons of the Raid, which is probably, what, 20 seconds? He even marked on, he has new teeth. New teeth? That's weird. So where was I? Oh, that's right. Barcelona. You can't base the new Doctor on that little bit of interaction. And we had to wait pretty much six months to find out what David Tennant was going to be. It takes a cup of tea in that kind of 37, 38 minute and that Doctor comes alive. Minute 39 of the Christmas Invasion, David Tennant becomes my Doctor. And now I'm ready to go and save the world too! I'm just going to talk about one set of episodes that I knew Emma is going to probably talk about as well. They are the two-part story, Science and the Diary and Forest of the Dead. This is the story where we're introduced to River Song. I am an unashamed fan of River Song. I absolutely love her. I know there are some fans who are just like, eh, River Song, eh, boring, yuck, make her go away. I love her. You can argue with me, I will fight to you. River Song is amazing, and we meet her for the first time in those episodes, and we find out that she has this long and complicated history with the Doctor, and for me, that was really fascinating. I liked her instantly, and I was like, who is this person? What is her background? I'm so excited to find out more. In 2013, I went home to Cornwall and I met up with Emma. We had the best day. We went shopping, we took a miniature David Tennant with us everywhere we went. It was, it was a good day. <laughs> I don't see Rachel very often because she lives all the way in Canada and it's, you know, not just a quick bus ride to go and see her or five minutes down the road in the car. So when we do get together, it's really special. And because Doctor Who is something that we both really love and can bond over, that day when we sat and we watched Silence in the Library and Forest of the Dead was really special because we got to share something that we both really already loved, but we got to share it together and that made us love it more. So yeah, I really like those two episodes and because I shared them with Rachel that day, I kind of think of them as our episodes. They're two of my all-time favourite episodes of Doctor Who. Welcome to the library. Hey, who turned out the lights? One of the things that I remember from that day was that we're talking and we're like, you know what we should have done today? We should have gone to the Doctor Who experience in Cardiff. And next time Rachel came home, guess where we went? It does have the most amazing memories for me. I mean, when you're both into something and you go somewhere where you can stand on the actual set and talk about episodes that were filmed on it and see props, it was just an amazing day out. And I can't think of anybody I would rather have shared it with than Rachel because she got it as much as I did. She loved it as much as I did. And it was something we had talked about so much. Oh, we have to go to the Doctor Who experience in Cardiff. We, we have to do this. And so actually getting to do it was amazing. And then you can fast forward to last summer when another announcement about Doctor Who was made. I think 
this is an amazing opportunity for every female in Doctor Who and every female fan of the show. I mean, I grew up, the Doctor was always a man, the Master was always a man, and now, just in the last three, four years, we have been changed. The, the Doctor and the Master. They don't have to be male. They can be female. And I think that is so empowering to female fans of all ages. We're watching the show because we want to be able to relate to the, the characters. We don't have to be the companions anymore. We can be the Doctor. And I'm looking forward to see what Judy brings to the shade. I have already said quite a lot on this subject. If you are interested, there is a whole other video I made talking about why I feel so passionately about there being a female doctor, why I'm so excited for Jodie Whittaker, and why I genuinely, genuinely think this is an amazing step in the right direction for the show and for the fans of the show too. I'm going to link it down here at the end of this video. And speaking of the end of this video, I should say a big thank you to Rachel for taking time out of her busy life to film herself talking about the show she loves so much. And I want to thank all of you guys for watching. If you've never watched an episode of Doctor Who in your life, go and watch some because maybe you'll love it. Now I normally do a little end screen bit here but my spidey senses are tingling and I'm just wondering if Rachel fancies doing it for me. Do hit that subscribe button for more awesomeness from my great friend Anna. Thanks Rach! My video about a female doctor is going to be over here if you're interested in hearing my opinions on it and you can indeed click on my floaty head to subscribe. I will talk to you all next Sunday. Take care everybody. Bye!